He who knew no sin is made to be sin in our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. I haven't fulfilled the righteousness of God. I have sinned in thought and deed. I am unclean before a holy God. And he who was clean before the Father voluntarily gives himself his perfect righteousness. The fact that he lived his entire life faultlessly. He had a perfect righteousness. He obeyed every commandment. He loved the Father perfectly. I've never loved God perfectly, and neither have you. He had a positive, full righteousness, which is imputed to me. It is given to me. I can't earn it. I can't purchase it. I can't walk up with some pittance, some filthy good works which are marked with my own failure and say, here's something for you. No, it only is the empty hand of faith that receives the hand of grace that is full of mercy and love and redemption and forgiveness and justification. It is that empty hand of faith that receives all of this at the hand of the merciful triune God. Mm. And how can God be just? Because he who knew no sin gave himself in our behalf so that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You see, I already have my intercessor. I am in him. In him. I have a relationship with him. I have been united with him so that I have his life and his righteousness. You will not be saved by standing in front of Jesus or behind Jesus or next to Jesus when the wrath of God comes. The only place it will be safe will be in him. And I say this not just to my Muslim friends, but to those who claim to be Christians. Simply knowing about Jesus is not enough. Being raised in a church is not enough. You need to know him as your Lord and Savior. Only in him do you have that righteousness which will avail before a holy God. Mm. Mm. And so it says he is a ransom for all, not just for Jews, not just for white Americans. There is no place in this world that we can go that we cannot proclaim Jesus Christ and say to any man, any woman, any child, no matter what their color, no matter what their race, If you will believe in Jesus Christ, you will find him to be a perfect Savior. This message is for all the world. But he is not a ransom for someone who rejects him. You will not be able to stand upon the parapets of hell and say, I have frustrated the work of Christ. No. His death is sufficient. And where does it say that? Well, if you have a Bible, turn with me to... Hebrews chapter 7. And there is a beautiful, beautiful text that is found here. After talking about the the, uh, priests of the Old Covenant that cannot continue because of death, Jesus in verse 22, it says, So much the more also Jesus has become the guarantee of a better covenant. Why is it a better covenant? Well, because the former priests, on the one hand, existed in greater numbers because they were prevented by death from continuing. So you had to have all these priests over and over again. But they could never bring about full salvation because they themselves needed salvation. They themselves died. But verse 24, But Jesus, on the other hand, because he continues forever, holds his priesthood permanently. He does not have to have successors in the priesthood. He does not have to have priests to come after him. He holds his priesthood permanently because he's not subject to death. And therefore, look at verse 25. Oh, my Muslim friend, hear these words which were penned long before a man named Muhammad ever breathed on this earth. Therefore, he is able also to save to the uttermost forever. Pantales is the Greek term. Completely. Those who draw near to God through him. Why? Since he always lives to make intercession for them. Mm. Hear those words again. He is able also to save forever those who draw near to God through him. Since he always lives to make intercession for them. Mm. 
Do you hear these words? You may have never heard them before. If you're a Muslim, I understand you may have never heard these words before, but hear them now, for they are life. This is not what we just read in the Hadith. This is not one to whom the world comes and, and says, intercede for us, and he, he goes before Allah and has to be taught a new form of worship. Here is one who in and of himself is able to save. He is able to save completely. He doesn't have to do it three or four times. Mm. And his salvation is not out of the flames of hell itself. The one who is saved by him is saved completely and never experiences the flames of hell. Praise God, ever. Yeah. He is able to save forever and completely a certain people. And who is it? Those who draw near to God through him. Now you see the Hebrews to whom this was written, they knew who that was. They understood that on the day of atonement, sometimes we call it the day of atonement, Yom Kippur, but when you look back at Leviticus, it's actually Yom Kippurim, the day of atonements, because numerous atonements were made that day. But the high priest, he had to make atonement for himself because he was a sinner. He had to make, a, make atonement for the tabernacle because it was being carried around by sinful people and things like that. But then the last atonement he makes is he takes the blood of the sacrifice and he goes into the holiest place and he sprinkles that place, that place of atonement, that place of propitiation between the angels on the mm. places, the blood there. Mm -hmm. That's what the high priest did. But you see, Jesus, he doesn't go in with the blood of, of goats and bulls. No. He enters into the holiest place in heaven, of which the earthly tabernacle was but a picture. Mm. And it's with his own blood that he makes final and perfect propitiation, atonement for the sins of those who drew, not, do, drew near. Because you see, on the Day of Atonement, when the offering was made, the people of God had gathered in the courtyard. And it was for them that the high priest interceded. He wasn't interceding for the Egyptians. He wasn't interceding for the Babylonians. There was a specific people for whom this intercession, the sacrifice was being made. And in fact, even those the people of Israel who had no faith had no part in this intercession and in this atonement. But those who drew near had to believe the promises of God. They had to obey what God had said. My friends, Muhammad has closed the door to you to draw near to God through Jesus. Mm. Mm. You cannot seek from Muhammad what can only be found in Jesus. Mm. Think of the character of Jesus. Think of who we are saying he was. He is the eternal Son of God made flesh. And he offers himself freely, voluntarily. How can there be spot? How can there be anything imperfect about his atonement? Can there be something imperfect about Muhammad's atonement? Think of this man. This man who saw his adopted son's wife and he clearly lusted for her, and all of a sudden receives a revelation from Allah that now you can marry the divorced sons of your, the divorced wives of your adopted sons. Mm -hmm. You know that's there. You know it's in the Quran. Read your hadith. Read your stories. Read the histories. His intercession is what you're going to trust for to get you out of the flames of hell when the incarnate Son of God that even Muhammad wouldn't accuse of sin... His intercession will not be enough? Mm. He says, I'm unworthy? Mm. No. Jesus never said he was unworthy. Mm. And the fact that he was raised from the dead proves that the Father found him to be worthy and accepted his sacrifice. Amen. What evidence do you have that Muhammad's intercession will ever be accepted? You have none.